Hey guys, today's topic is about the biography and literary works of E.M. Foster. But before starting, I will suggest you to subscribe to my channel so that you can get all my literature related videos. So let's start. It's impossible to love and part. You will wish that it was. You can transmute love, ignore it, murder it. But you can never put it out of you. I think by experience that the poets are right. Love is eternal. Moving towards the introduction of E.M. Foster, whose full name was Edward Morgan Foster. He was regarded as one of the gifted writers in the history of English literature. He is an English novelist, essayist, literary critic and short story writer. He writes about the fundamental values and discloses the hypocrisy of the British colonizing mentality. He was a novelist of the early 20th century. Moving towards the early life and literary life of E.M. Foster, E.M. Foster was born on 1st January 1879 in London, England. Um, his father was an architect and his mother was and his mother was a housewife whose name was Alice Clara. Early education of, for him was at Tombridge School, Kent. Later he studied classic philosophy literature history at King's College, Cambridge. When E.M. Foster was of one year, his father died of tuberculosis. Later in 1887, E.M. Foster inherited £8,000 from his aunt and this money helped him later to become a future writer. In 1893, he spent his entire life um, in Hertfordshire and, and this place where he lived inspired him for his future novel Howard's and in 1897 at King's College Cambridge he became a member of Cambridge Apostles. In 1901 he traveled Europe with his mother and started writing seriously. In 1902 Foster taught at the Workingsman College. In 1907, E.M. Foster joined the Bloomsbury Group as a member and became a friend of Virginia Woolf and Leonard Woolf. In 1912, he visited India and started writing A Passage to India. In 1914, he visited Egypt, Germany and India with Goldsworthy Louis Dickinson. In 1915, he worked voluntarily for the Red Cross in Egypt. In 1919, he came back to England. In 1921, he visited back to India once again. And, and he was disheartened when he came to know about the criticism of for his con homosexual content. He thought of leaving writing. In 1927, he was elected as a fellow of King's College, Cambridge. In 1934, he became the first president of National Council for Civil Liberties in England. In 1945, his mother died. He was elected as an honorary fellow at King's College, Cambridge at the same year. After his mother's death, he started living at King's College, Cambridge. And in 1947, he visited the United States to deliver his lectures. On 1st January 1953, E.M. Foster is rewarded with the order of the Companions of Honor. In 1969, he was awarded with the Order of Merit. In 1970, E.M. Foster died of several health issues in England. He never married because of his homosexuality. Moving towards the important works written by E.M. Foster in 1905, his first novel was published, Where Angels Th Feel to Thread. In 1905, The Longest Journey. In 1908, A Room with a View. In 1911, The Celestial Omnibus. In 1912, Howard's End. In 1924, A Passage to India. In 1927, Aspects of the Novel. In 1928, The Eternal Movement. In 1940, England's Pleasant Land. In 1945, A Daisy of Timothy. In 1951, Two Cheers for Democracy in 1971, Muris in 1972, The Life to Come in, 19, in 2003, His Architect Summer was published.
moving towards the themes the dominant themes in his writings first is that he believes in the human relationship which are tolerant and sympathetic and affectionate he writes to promote love and optimism among different cultures in the world he writes about sexual freedom and being a homosexual he writes to he writes to teach tolerance for homosexual love he is liberal humanist and also describes his thought of about imperialism in his novel he passes strong social comments briefly his major subjects under discussion are class difference homosexuality and genders if i had to choose between betraying my country and betraying my friend i hope i should have the guts to betray my country moving towards the literary style of ian e. foster ian e. foster was a writing writer who belonged from the late victorian era and the modern early modern era the circumstances in the 20th century made the core of his writing he writes in the genre of symbolism modernism mysticism and realism there is a huge and use of irony in his writings his style is narrative concise and fluent his style is different from the contemporary modernism as he takes breaks from it and he employs a different colloquial form as he deeply observes the middle class of the society there is a humanistic approach in his writing and it is well discussed in his writing what i believe thanks for watching i hope you will like or dislike the video also comment in the comment box for further inquiry and also subscribe to my channel if you like